hundred years ago, travel was not for the common man. Nowadays, everybody travels, both long distances and inexpensively. This raises the specter of the spread of new and emerging infectious diseases. How do we cope with this? Okay. Basically, the way parasitology works in most laboratories is you prepare your sample, you then come along and look at the sample, and what you hope to do is look for certain items that are in there. They're common, for instance, worm eggs, uh, nematodes, trematodes, cestodes, things like that. There are also various types of protozoa, uh, amoeba that cause antibiosis, things like that. The strategy is that you spend a couple of years getting trained so that when you look down the microscope, you have the pattern recognition skills in order to spot various types of parasites. In order to make this easier, they come up with various types of material. For instance, this is a uh, chart that shows you various eggs you may find in people's poop. And these are nice color pictures to show what they look like. The problem is that they don't always look like the beautiful pictures, plus there's a lot of other material in there that makes diagnosis quite difficult. So it's a real skill to be able to come along and use pattern recognition to properly diagnose something. The problem is that some people are very good at it, while others aren't, and it takes lots and lots of practice, and essentially we don't have the time or the finances to get people trained in this particular skill. There are individuals who are quite good at it, the problem is that most people don't have that individual in their lab, so how do you cope with that situation? One of the things about a parasitology lab is we like to say it's as simple as one, two, three. First, you come up with a specimen, you put it on a slide and you stain and you fix it. Second, you come along and put it under a microscope, such as this one. And third, you get somebody who should know what they're doing, carefully look at it and decide what's down there. The problem is that while microscopes and slides and specimens are very common, the people who actually know what they're doing and are able to identify organisms properly tend to be a retirement age. So a lot of the parasitologists around the world that have the expertise we need are about to retire. This poses a big problem. How do you get an accurate diagnosis when your experts are walking out the door to have a lovely time on a beach somewhere for the rest of their lives? One way we'd like to suggest is the fact that if you go into any laboratory now, you tend to see microscopes, and they tend to have a digital camera nearby. You also find a lot of high-speed computers, and they happen to be hooked up to networks. So why not take advantage of this? In this particular case, what we have is we've got our microscope, and what we can do is we can send the image up to a camera. So in this particular case, what you're seeing is the image that's coming off the microscope. This is actually what somebody's poop sample we're looking at. And if you look through, this guy here means nothing. Or this fellow up here means the person probably has a tapeworm. Pork tapeworm, beef tapeworm, I don't know. Their choice is how they misbehave, but they've probably got a tapeworm. One potential or way to solve the problems we are encountering in parasitology is to take the experts we have and distribute them out a little bit better. One technology that may allow us to do this is to use an access grid, or basically allow people to talk to each other over a computer link. What you're seeing right now is such an access grid, and I've signed onto it, and I can talk to people through this bit up here, which is actually a microphone and a set of speakers, delivers nice stereo sound uh, almost instantaneously between people. The other interesting thing is that this link down here is the picture of my microscope so that I can actually show people what I'm seeing down my microscope. And even if the resolution isn't perfect, people can stop and say, hey, you know, that's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, that I think is real. This item here, that sort of spirally thing, that's just an artifact, means the person's getting their fiber. So it allows people who aren't experts to talk to an expert, plus you can see what's happening down the microscope. It's also very easy for me to take a high resolution digital image and send it to them and say, well, what do you think about this? A lot of parasitology is you can look at materials in books, but if somebody looks over your shoulder and says, well, if you focus a little bit on that, you see hooks inside. That means it's a cesto, things like that. So it allows people to hook up, to talk to each other, which has a couple of huge benefits, potentially. One is it will improve diagnosis, and we're always looking for better ways to improve diagnosis. The second is that if people want to brush up on their uh, what they are doing in terms of their work, they can uh, basically talk to an expert in a short period of time, get educational material through the same sort of system. Another advantage is if I start seeing something unusual and I don't know what it is, I can start talking to people and discover if they're seeing the same thing. 
So it allows you to predict, for instance, if we're having malaria outbreaks uh, from travelers, whether we're having SARS showing up, diseases like that.